Many people were taught about how to build applications with the AI, but not a lot of people talk about how we can be able to use AI to test our software. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called TestBright, which is the easiest AI agent for software testing. Specifically, I'm going to show you first how to use the TestBright MCP server within our AI coding IDE. I'm going to show you how to take a simple application like this, where we're using natural language here to request information about the stock. And it also contains tools like TradingView to visualize the data for the stock. And it also give us real-time information about the stock. So in that case, in this video, we're going to test it with this application using this tool. To get started, first thing first, we're going to click on sign in for TestBright. After we sign in, we click on MCP tests. So if we want to do a quick install, here you can see we can be able to click on install now. So here you can see it works with cursor or it also work with the MCP servers that we have. So here you can see all we have to do is just simply copy this object for this MCP servers. And let's say if I were to open using CoLM and here I'm just gonna click on MCP servers. I'm just gonna add additional MCP server here. And here I'm just gonna get the API key here. So to get the API key, I can simply go to the dashboard and click on API keys and click on create API key. So here I'm just gonna say MCP server, copy the key. And here I'm just gonna paste the key here. All right, so that's gonna be my key. So here you can see we have TestBright enabled. And if we were to look at the TestBright MCP servers, and you can see that simply we just say, help me to test this project with TestBright, it's gonna use this MCP server to handle the rest. So if we were to look at the steps here that it take, it's gonna read the PRD file first, analyze the code, generate a TestBright PRD, which will normalize the product requirement doc that we have, generate the test code, execute the tests, provide the results, and also enable the fixes. So it's gonna give us a fixed report on how to fix the things that it found. So pretty much you can see that this MCP server is gonna save developers a lot of time simply because it's able to generate that test report. And based on that test report, it's gonna generate the fixes and also the test coverage and tests based on the application that we have. So in that case, I'm just gonna use Opus 4 here. And here we're just gonna say, help me test this project with test sprites. So let's see what it does. All right, so during this process, it was able to call the MCP server for test sprite here to bootstrap the tests. And eventually you can see that it's able to scan the entire code base and generate a code summary, which is this JSON file right here, which analyzes the project structure and create the code summary. So if we were to look at this, you can see that it has a list of tech stack and also features. And for each features, you can see that these are the files that are related to that feature. And once we verify that the code summary is correct, then it's gonna to proceed to generate the PRD file and a test plan using TestBright. So in that case, we're just gonna say verified, then it should be able to start to generate the test plan. All right, so eventually you can see that it generates the full test plan for front end and back end. Now here you can see this is the report for the markdown file for the test reports. And here you can see this is the project overview, the test environment setups, and also the code analysis summary, and also the key features. And here's the test plan generated. So here you can see these are the scenarios for the front end and also the execution process and basically generates a port for the status of the current application. And based on this report, it gives you the recommendations on the actions that it can take and also the future improvements on the CICD integrations, test coverage, performance monitorings, and even the error trackings. And it gives you a conclusion and everything. And if you wanna get into the test case for each scenarios, you can also view the test sprites front end test plan, which here you can see for each object, we have a test case. For example, for this plan, this is the title, descriptions, and these are the steps that I take to produce that test. So overall, you can see that it gives you a full test report for the application and what are the things that we can further improve. All right, so now you know how to use the test by MCP server. Let's take a look at how we can be able to use the app to create our test. So here, we're just gonna click on create test and we give it a name for the test name, stock app, for example. And here we can be able to give the API details about the information about our backend like the API endpoints, the name, and so on. So if we don't have backend, we can also skip the backend here. So here we're just gonna click on skip backend since we only wanna test the front end here. So for front end, we can just simply pass the URL for the website for the web application. And here we also be able to provide the login information if we have authentications, but it's optional. And here we also can be able to provide the testing plan or instructions for the testing application. All right, so once we click on this, this is what it looks like. It's gonna create a draft for the test plan. So currently it found one URL and also eight test cases. So here is basically the draft for the test plan details. So it contains the test name, the priority, right? The test name and also the description for the test. Things like testing the real-time data for the market visualizations and also chatbot interactions, multi-tool response verifications, and also doing the trading view and air handling, user authentications if we have any. So here you can see we can also uncheck any tests uh, if we don't want to, for example, we can uncheck the user authentication 
since our application does not have any uh, logins or anything. So in that case, we're just gonna click on Nest to move on. So here you can see it's gonna create the test. It's gonna test the application one by one based on the test case that we have. All right, so now you can see that it has run all eight tests and here you can see these are the test results. So what's really cool about this is that it also even creates a screen recording on the things that it did for each test. So for example, we have chatbot interactions with the stock queries. So if we were to play this video, I'm just gonna full screen this and play from the start. You can see that first thing first, is going to enter the query. So here you can see this is the results for the response on this question, which here you can see it marked as passed. And it also gave us the code on how it creates this test. So here you can see it's using Playwright here for testing. So first thing first, it's gonna set the Chromium browser in headless mode. And here it's gonna navigate to this page, wait for the DOM to be loaded. And here you can see it's gonna select the element and knows exactly where to click to fill the input box. And it's gonna select the element to fill the input and get the results which is pretty cool. And we can also click on run here to rerun that test. All right, so let's also take a look at a failed test that it ran. So here you can see there's also the market data, which here you can see is verified that the widget is not able to correctly display the Amazon data. So let's take a look at this in detail. So if I were to full screen this, click on Amazon, you can see that we're getting a JSON object. And currently you can see that we don't have any data display for Amazon, which is a problem. So you can see that it's able to point out this bug and report that this is a failed test. And of course, we can always rerun that test by using the code here and run that test again. And if we were to click on all tests here, you can see that these are the tests that we have run. We can also click here to download a report, which here you can see it generates a testing report in a PDF format. So here you can see this is the agenda, which contains the high level overview, key findings, test coverage, execution summaries, and also the text executions breakdown. So if I were to look at the summary one by one for the high level overviews, we haven't tested any for the back ends, but we only focus on the front end for the websites. And then here you can see for the test coverage here, we have five passing and two failed. And in terms of the front end UI testing coverage, these are the list of execution summaries, test case, descriptions, impact, and also the status. And if we were to scroll down, there's also each test execution breakdown, and we can be able to see the status and also be able to view the code on how we'd be able to run that test. Any other part of it is we can also export to GitHub. So for all the code that it ran, it's gonna create a repository, add it onto our CI/CD pipeline, or also be able to run it whenever we need it. And what's really cool about this is that there's also a monitoring system where we can create a schedule to rerun the test that we have. So for example, the test that we just did, we can also schedule a time to rerun that test. But obviously currently I'm using the free plan, which if you wanna use the schedule one, is gonna be additional $19 per month to upgrade, which gets you more credits, monitoring and scheduling, and also the optimized executions. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you do wanna give this product a try, there's a free version with 150 credits per month and you get pretty much what we just talked about in this video. But if you want to upgrade for a starter plan, currently we have one month's discount, which completely for free, which you get 400 credits per month. And the cool thing is that you get advanced models like Cloth 3.7s or GPT 4.1, and you also get the optimized executions and priority supports. So if you do want to give this product a try, check out this product, testbrights.com. And pretty much that's it for this video. If you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this, but with that being said, I will see you in the next video.